Hi, so today I'd like to discuss what an integrated circuit is and also what the enable voltages or the end trip tabs on a lot of these chips are for, what they do, and why it's important that you know what they are. So that being said, let's take a look at the schematic. So this here is an integrated circuit. See that U7200 with all these tabs? That's an integrated circuit. This is an integrated circuit. This U7400 is an integrated circuit. Uh, an integrated circuit is any combination of capacitors, resistors, transistors, inductors, and other things like that that are combined into one package with the purpose of doing something cool. So for example, this is not an integrated circuit. This is an inductor. This is a single component. This over here is a transistor. This is not an integrated circuit. This is a single component. This here is an integrated circuit. This is a combination of many components inside of one chip. So many integrated circuits will not turn on or not perform their intended function if they're not told to. So many, many of these have something called an N-trip tab or an enable tab or an N-tab, and today I want to talk about the importance of those. So, for example, you may, want, you may be looking at me going, Lewis, how do you know what an N-trip tab is? How do you know what this thing does? Well, this chip over here says TPS51125, right? And I have a working internet connection at work with Google. Right, so I do this, I type that into Google, I click here, I wait for Texas Instruments websites to load, which is gonna take forever because I'm trying to upload a YouTube video while simultaneously uh, downloading and using the internet using Time Warner, which is not gonna happen at the $200 a month that I give them. So let's look at this PDF file here, right? Now one of the cool things about the, this is even if you don't understand 90% of this, you can see what each one of the tabs does. So see pin configuration and functions. So let's let's fast forward over to that. Again, because the rest of this is this, like thermal information, electrical characteristics, minimum on time, vol, you know, current sense, junction temperature. No, 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 none of that's for me. And none of that's for you either. What it's for us is this: a description of what each pin does. So NTRIP 1 and NTRIP 2. Channel 1 and channel 2 enable OCL trip setting pins. Connect resistor from this pin to ground to set thresholds for sense. Short to ground to shut down a switcher channel. So important part, short to ground to shut down a switcher channel. Short to ground to shut down a switcher channel. Do you understand? So over here, so the way this thing is going to work, as I said, in the PDF it says that when this is shorted to ground, it will, it will stop this power from being generated. So let's take a look at how this works. This is a transistor that's going to pass this power to ground. It's going to short this in trip rail to ground when P5VS3 underscore enable underscore L is present. So P5VS3 underscore enable underscore L. So this signal over here is going to be present when PP, this PP3V42 underscore G3 hot signal is not shorted to ground by this transistor. So this transistor is going to short that signal to ground based on PM sleep S4L. So when in this computer, when the MCP outputs PM underscore sleep underscore S4 underscore L, what it's going to do is it's going to short this signal to ground which is going to cause this voltage over here to be low. So when P5VS3 underscore enable underscore L over here winds up being low, what's going to happen is, come on, scroll, scroll like you got an SSD. Don't scroll like you have a fucking hard drive and a Pentium 2. Oh my God, I hate PDF sometimes. You have no idea. This is just... This is, this is unfucking necessary. Your six core Haswell with two SSDs in RAID 0. Behave like it. Okay. Here we go. So where what was I? Oh, yeah. So when that signal is low, when this signal over here is low, it's not going to pass this N-trip tab to ground, which means that it's going to allow the voltage rail to work. When that signal over here is allowed to be high, which is going to happen if the sleep signal is low. So let me just go back there again and hope that it allows me in less than... 20 seconds. So when this signal over here is high, in the case that it would be high, if the sleep signal is not present to short it to ground, what's going to happen is that that transistor is going to open. It's going to short P5VS3 N-trip tab to ground. And if it shorts the P5VS3 N-trip tab to ground, you don't have P5VS3. So you could have a fine PP5VS3 rail. You could have a fine controller chip. You could have a fine buck converter. You could have PP bus G3 hot working just fine. But if that N-trip tab 
is being shorted to ground, the chip is simply never going to turn on its own working circuit and actually get to work. So a lot of the times people are troubleshooting power circuits and power rails without even figuring out if the signal is there. Like, what if there's a problem with this transistor and it's always going to ground? What if this signal is not present? What if this pathway over here is burned? Uh, this is one thing to think about when you're troubleshooting any type of electronic circuit. What, does it have specific voltages that are supposed to show up at specific tabs to actually turn it on? Another great example of this is the backlight circuit that I just talked about in the voltage divider video. Here over here it has BKL underscore EN. You may wonder, what does that do? Well, again, Google. LP8545SQ over here. Let's Google that. LP8545SQX. Here we go. I can click and the first result on Google is a data sheet. So we're going to click on the data sheet over here. And again, we're going to ignore all this stuff and just get to what I'm interested in. So here we go, pin 4. So pin 4 is what we're looking at over here. Pin 4 is BKLEN. And on the PDF that I had open, 4. Enable input pin. Enable. So again, this is one of those things where if you don't know, even if you don't know what the word enable means or enable input, you can just look on a board that has working backlight. You can see that there's 3 volts there. And on your board with no backlight, you may notice that there's 0 volts there. And then, again, eventually, this is where using the brain comes in, because it doesn't matter how much you see on the screen, if you don't have the ability to connect the dots and see that 2 plus 2 equals 4, you're never going to get anywhere. So, but enable pin. You need to have power there. Again, you may have a perfectly fine backlight chip. You may have no shorts to ground anywhere. You may have everything here working the way it's supposed to. But maybe this little resistor is blown, so you don't have voltage on your enable pin. So before you do this monkey see, monkey do nonsense that I see on the internet all the time, where people are like, well, this chip I was told controls backlight, and I have no backlight, so I replace it. You can put 50 different backlight chips on there. If you don't have power going to the enable pin to tell it to turn on, it doesn't matter. I can put 50 different light bulbs in here in my office. If I have the switch turned off, it's never going to turn on. A lot of integrated circuits have N-trip or enable pins, or they're called N, enable, N-trip, trip signal, whatever it is. Look for something like that. If you don't know what it does, Google the name of the chip. It's almost always in the schematic. You're going to find a PDF for it. If you don't find a PDF for that specific one, maybe you find a PDF for an older revision or a revision for for a machine that's not Apple, where they don't go out of their way to hide schematics for stuff just so that people like me can't fix their fucking products. Uh, you know, find out what that thing does and see if there's an enable voltage there. And if you don't see an enable voltage there and you think it should be, look on a good board. See if on a good board you have an enable voltage there and it just connect the dots in your head. A big part of troubleshooting integrated circuits is not just replacing the integrated circuit and looking for shorts to ground and looking for voltages that are main power lines that are missing. Sometimes it really is as simple as this thing was simply not being told to turn on.